America Meditating Radio Show, we collect wisdom, inspire each other, and empower hearts 24-7. Hi, I'm Sister Jenna. Join me and guest on Blog Talk Radio as we amplify stories that compel us to be more for ourselves and everyone else around us. The Azar Foundation for Children of the World is an organization aimed to support women and children in need across the globe. We believe in empowering lives, strengthening minds, and providing programs that enrich health and education. The Azar Foundation was founded in 2003 and has been serving the world ever since. Visit us at our website at www.azarforchildren.org. That's www.azar, the number four, children.org to find out more information about our endeavors and join our mailing list. Remember, the smile and the cry of a child doesn't have any language. The Azar Foundation. Are you in need of a tech service company that's going to deliver the best solutions for your business? Then Actronica is your solutions headquarters. Here we specialize in your individual needs to make sure your business shines. For more information, please call 301 401-0070 417-0070 or visit us at our website at attronica.net at Tronica, where we deliver for you. Are you stressed, frustrated, or annoyed at work? You don't have to be. Soothe your mind and open your heart as Sister Jenna guides you through a peaceful, calming meditation that will prepare you to focus, be present, and most importantly, bring you back to your inner peace. The Meditation Museum in Silver Spring, Maryland offers a variety of courses and activities to make your life go a whole lot smoother. Located at 9525 Georgia Avenue, you will be able to experience the beautiful silence that's in the space. There are courses in Raj Yoga Meditation, Positive Thinking, Stress-Free Living, and Personal Development Classes. For more information, call us at 301-588-0144 or visit us online at meditationmuseum.org. Hello, this is Kristen Hoffman, and it is with great love, joy, pleasure, and spirit that I am listening to America Meditating Radio Show. Rising Above Taking just a minute, I imagine stepping into a hot air balloon. The balloon slowly lifting up into the blue sky. Looking down, I see the picture of my life. Any problems seem so small. I take this moment to enjoy silence, peace, and to rest my mind. As the balloon gently descends, I return to my day with a quiet and peaceful mind.
Hello, everyone, and welcome to America Meditating Radio. I'm your host, Sister Jenna. Stay tuned. We're going to be having a wonderful conversation with Donald Altman, who is author of Clearing Emotional Clutter. It's a big issue nowadays. It always has been. We're also passionate in our own ways about how we do life, no? And sometimes it doesn't always go the way that we want it to. And then we get to witness within our own being by the way that we react or respond to the situation. And so can you imagine doing that for a week or two weeks or a month or a year or 10 years or a lifetime or five lifetimes or 20 lifetimes where we've been just accumulating a lot of unfulfilled feelings that just are, they haven't been sorted through. And so they're just sitting somewhere there in the soul and just percolating in their own way. So today's conversation will definitely, I'm sure, give us some insight. But before we go to Donald, I have to tell you, everyone, we had the most beautiful evening at Busboy and Poets in Sherlington, Virginia, where we did the first conversation of Meditate the Vote. And many of the team members were there. And I have to tell you, it unfolded into something even more than what we had actually designed And what we came away with was that Meditate the Vote was definitely a people's movement. It was something in which we as citizens, whether it's of a country, a land, or a home, a business, we are constantly voting, which means we're constantly making choices. And those choices are impacting not only our lives, but the lives of those around us. And so last night, we had the most intriguing uh, feedback from individuals who focused on the four core questions that we have offered everyone to percolate on, like how powerful are you to affect change and how worthy are you and how does your life model it? And so it's not about choosing a political side or presidential candidate for 2017. It's about us showing up and being a very, very big part of the story. And so please, dear friends, go to Facebook or Twitter, Meditate the Vote, and share with us some of your thoughts. Uh, Follow the page, but also go to americameditating.org and click on the events page for updates on what we are intending to do with this. By November 8th, we should be coming to closure. And of course, closure really doesn't exist. It just means the opening of a new cycle. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how that's going to unfold for all of us that's involved. Before I get Donald on the air, let's go into another little segment of our own inner reflection, letting go from off the grid into the heart. Breathe in. Om Shanti. The time that we choose to be aware doesn't necessarily require me to just sit and meditate. But even while I walk and move around, I can be in a meditative awareness, which is awareness of the soul the original, eternal, imperishable being of light. For a little while, I'd like to invite you to be present, to be here, and to be now. Allow your mind to settle in the moment, to relax. This meditation is about awareness. It's about becoming aware of your original and eternal self. It's about connecting to your truth. Let go of your name. And observe yourself feeling nameless. Let go of your gender to discontinue thinking you're a man or a woman. Let it go and observe how you would feel walking around without a gender. Let go of the role that you play and let go 
of the titles that you own. Observe how you're feeling as you are gradually letting go. Let go of your religion and put it aside just for now. of your nationality and even the language that you're accustomed to. Imagine you have no name, gender, role, title, religion. nationality or even a language. Ask yourself, how do you feel at this moment? you think of. The Supreme Soul would think of you. And you, the liberated soul, would think of the Supreme. In this state of absolute freedom, I am truly who I am. A free, peaceful, pure, immortal, and eternal soul. Allow yourself to just be absorbed in this awareness. At this time, welcome back. That was letting go from off the grid into the heart. And I hope you gained an experience of just the original worth and the original sense of yourself. Because I know every time I hear that meditation, I do. The America Meditating Radio is proud to welcome Donald Altman. Donald is the author of Clearing Emotional Clutter and several other books about mindfulness. The same psychotherapist and former Buddhist monk, an award-winning writer, and an expert on mindful eating. He teaches in the neurobiology program at Portland State University and teaches mindfulness and spiritual values around the country. Donald is dedicated to bringing these ancient practices in tune with modern living and to invite wellness into what we know as Americans all too well, a very stress-filled way of living. Donald, welcome to America Meditating Radio. Well, uh, thank you, Sister Jenna. And uh, if I could just say for a moment, I really connected with that last meditation that you did. It was very beautiful, and it pointed out just where a lot of our suffering does come from, and that is you could almost think of that as clutter, emotional clutter. Mm. Well, thank you for that. Hopefully you'll take it to the university that you're at. Congratulations on your new book, Clearing Emotional Clutter, which is big. I think many of us know what emotional clutter is, but we don't know what to do with it. So I know, right? Is it as bad yeah. as we hear it? Is it like hoarding a lot of stuff, like what people do in houses? Is it the same emotionally? I think so. In fact, I think it could be a lot worse because you can see the physical clutter that hoarders have. And so you can actually, you know what you have to 
do about it <laughs> to clean things up. But with emotional clutter, many of us have lived with it for years, and we, we may not even be aware of it because we can't see it. And it's become so ingrained and embedded in our thinking processes and actually in our brain, at the brain level. And uh, it can come from many sources. It can come from our childhood, from our past, uh, from our belief systems, you know, from our culture. It can come from our anxieties, worries about tomorrow, things yet undone. Mm-hmm. It can come from the day-to-day wear and tear of the daily grind and stresses that people face. So, so it can come from all these different sources, and yet uh, it, what happens is it fills our mind up. And I find it fascinating. Scientists have now said we could have as many as between 25 to 75 thoughts per second. Now, the Buddha thought we could have 3,000 thoughts per second. But if you, you know, if you went with that low range of just 25 thoughts a second, that's about 75,000 thoughts in the course of a day. And so I want your audience to think about this for a moment. How many of those thoughts tell you something profound about who you really are? Mm-hmm. Uh, how many of those thoughts are even accurate? How many are maybe mm-hmm. just conditioned, old, you know, habitual, reactive thoughts that come up just so quickly that you're not really reacting, not really responding, I should say, to what's happening in front of you? Mm-hmm. And that's the sad yeah. part of all the clutter is it keeps us from living the life we would want, from finding bliss and joy and peace and love right here because we're filled up with all the clutter. It's like a filter. It's blocking out the light. Yeah, it's like a lot of waste. You know, you're just holding on to a lot of waste. And a lot of people are walking. I'm walking around with pain that I'm not maybe even aware of. I mean, every time I hear a love song, I just get really melancholy and I'm never quite sure (laughs) (laughs) why. But what I'm saying is that we are walking around with pain from various forms of trauma. And Mm, just this mm -hmm. morning, Donald, I was thinking to myself, Without the pain and without the darkness, I'm not going to learn something. I'm not going to learn. I'm not going to find some passage or way of identifying myself. But yet, many of us hold on to that pain longer than we should. What is the reason for that? I, I think you're absolutely right. We can grow from that that pain, and and yet if we start dwelling in on it, and we don't also see that there's something behind it, that wherever there's a shadow, there's also a light, right? Light and shadow. And the, I think the reason is our it's our brain biology, that we have a brain that is wired to react and protect us. And it's a very ancient survival system. And so we can have a negative event happen that just takes a second or two, and our brain is wired to remember that a lifetime. Isn't that amazing? But yet, Something mm-hmm. positive. We we see a butterfly or a bird or something pretty. Don't remember <laughs> that. We don't remember that. <laughs> it takes about it takes you know a good ten to twenty minutes of actually focusing on the positive, so it encodes in the brain in the same way that a negative memory does, and so it's it's almost mm-hmm. like uh, having to not let that default system. And it's really our it's it's really like a. Um, smoke detector in the brain. You could think of it that way. A smoke detector is always on, but if your smoke detector is always sounding the alarm and there's really nothing dangerous out there, and that's what happens to a lot of us, our smoke detector gets triggered Mm -hmm. and there's nothing really that's very threatening or dangerous to us. It can get Mm -hmm. triggered by hearing somebody say something we don't like and we suddenly get defensive instead of opening and being able to enter a mutual sense of, you know, trying to explore more deeply. So we protect mm-hmm. and defend. So it's it. So yeah, there's a lot of trauma and a lot of pain out there, and yet we are able to transcend it. And what I tried to do in clearing emotional clutter was to give people some practical tools. And there's a lot of meditations in the book as well for helping them access the more spacious part of the mind, the, the mind that is beyond all these thousands of thoughts that we grab onto or that lead us in a direction that doesn't really benefit us and how to and get to that more spacious awareness place and how to clear out the clutter by appreciating those in-between moments of life. You know, often we're so fixed on the future, on getting to point A or point B, uh, but it's mm-hmm. all a journey. We're all just moving through, and all of life is really an in-between <laughs> 
experience, and how can we be okay with that? How can we open and accept and receive that in a tender and a kind of a way? And I have a joke to tell you, Donald. I was at yeah. an iridologist and the other day, and she didn't know who I am. And um, she's checking me, and she's going, oh, your third eye is opening. And I said, opening? Shouldn't that be opened? <laughs> and then... And then she was saying, well, you know, when I just look at you, I could see that you're pulled by a lot of people. So I think what's happening with it, it's opening and closing. And you're not sleeping. You know what I would recommend that you do is meditate. And I started <laughs> laughing like a million little, I don't know, minions. Because I said, you know, at one point, and I'm sharing this to all of our friends that listen to the show regularly, is that mm-hmm. even when we do know what to do and how to be. Understanding the subtleties of the soul is such a profound journey, and I know it is a simple one. It just simply takes attention. And in your book, you talk about getting off the emotional elevator. And I want to understand right. more what meant by the emotional elevator. Is it just the fluctuations, the ups and downs? or? Well, I think it's the emotional elevator can be seen as what we grab onto, what we cling to, what we want to have happen. And so something positive happens in your life, for example, you can, and that's like somebody pushing your elevator up. You know, you get that job, you, you, um, something positive happens. Somebody gives you a compliment and the elevator goes up, you feel great. Or maybe the opposite happens. You get a bad report from your doctor, your health, that you have a health problem, or uh, somebody doesn't return your text that, uh, right away and you're being, you feel like you're being ignored and the elevator goes down. And so here you are, your emotions going up and down throughout the day, and we all can relate to that, and it happens. And and it happens often because things aren't exactly the way we want them to be. We want to have a sense of control, and yet life doesn't operate according to our demands. And so how can you get off that elevator? It could be exhilarating, chasing the highs, right? But... Over the long term, it becomes um, exhausting and tiresome to have to do that. So how can we find a place of equanimity where we can be at peace with the highs and the lows and not need to chase those highs or avoid the lows? And so I actually have a meditation for helping people get off that elevator by just expanding their awareness and noticing the space between the thoughts, this little space, and start to become aware that this space exists. And what I loved in your meditation was how you were helping people do that by dropping different parts of the identity, the I, the me, the my, the mine, that we can get stuck in this egocentric point of view. And that's where a lot of our uh, pain, a lot of our suffering comes from. A lot of our emotional clutter comes from that. So... Mm -hmm. um, I find that spacious is kind of spacious awareness. You know, if I take a bucket of paint, say I have a bucket of red paint and I toss it into the air, it doesn't paint the air, does it? And the air is like mm-hmm. our spacious awareness, right? That paint doesn't taint it. Right. And it's like our thoughts. They really don't taint that awareness. And we can uh, start to cultivate that awareness and know that it's with us all the time and not get stuck on grabbing on to all of those different thoughts that come up. We're not trying to stop our mind from thinking. I also like to tell people that. I mean, that's what right. the mind does. It has all these thoughts. But you could think of those as mental sensations as opposed to, you know, some truth about myself. As a as a psychotherapist, Sister Jenna, I would often write on the on a whiteboard in my office, thoughts are not necessarily facts. Most of the time they're not even close. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so I so, uh, true. so so you know it is important to get off that elevator and to mm-hmm. uh, and to kind of develop this the sense of of uh, equanimity to the highs and the I lows. Agree. To the, I agree. One of the yeah. things, and I'd like if you could talk to this, Donald, is our ability to listen to ourselves. Mm. You might say listen or hear or pay attention or be a witness yeah. or observe. And I, it could be just that we're in such a fast-paced uh, culture. Uh, it could be that what we call in our study the karmas, the 
actions that we've performed in our past, they're also catching up because there's mm-hmm. some that we did that didn't have the best of intentions. And that's sitting also in the self, that's sitting in the subconscious, that's sitting in the soul. And so if I'm listening, which is observing these thoughts, if I'm hearing these thoughts, am I able to help removing the clutter that's sitting there or do I need some kind of a knowledge to help me to decide or decipher is this a good emotion or memory that's emerging or is this not because some of us we feed the negative emotions so much that we don't even know anymore if it's good or not for us Mm. you know what I'm Um, saying yeah I'd like to just start by telling you a short story if I could and this was somebody I worked with who um, had lost his job I oh, actually had a business. He lost his business, and he came in. He was very depressed, and he said, you know, I, I'll never get another job. I don't interview well. I don't hardly know how to use computers. The economy is bad, and I stopped him. I said, well, you've got a whole, oh, you've got many good reasons why you can't move forward. Would you mind creating a top ten list? How do you feel about that, of all the top ten reasons why you can't move forward? And he kind of liked that idea. When he came back to see me, he pulled out his list of the top ten reasons, but he stopped me first, and he said, oh, you know what? He said, something happened when I created my list and I looked at it. He said, he said, I realize that this is how my mother thinks, and I don't want to think like this anymore. So he had started the process of, by writing the thoughts down, starting to look within and notice that maybe these weren't his thoughts. He had learned a way of perceiving and experiencing from his family. And so I think one very important thing that we can do is to start to use attention and awareness to just observe in a very neutral kind of a way, observe our thoughts, and just to get to know them better. Make friends with the mind is what I call it. And because we're so connected with technology nowadays, I use a technology metaphor, which I call inner Facebooking. And I even have a chapter on that in in Clearing Emotional Clutter. And inner Facebooking... You know that when you're on Facebook, uh, I don't know if you're on Facebook, but <laughs> you know you're looking at the posts people put up, and those posts can affect your how you're feeling. And yet there's a second Facebook, the inner Facebook, the mental posts that we all put up all the time. So I want people to start thinking about those as Facebook posts. And what are your posts saying? How do they make you feel? Are they supportive? Or are maybe they're saying, oh, you know, I'm not good enough. I'm inadequate in this area. Or I don't compare well. Look at the vacation other people are taking. You know, we all have a whole second experience of what's coming up in the mind. And so research has actually shown, this is fascinating, that if you notice your thoughts and your emotions and you're able to just name them, So you say, oh, you know, I'm experiencing anger here, I'm experiencing sadness or grief, that when you're able to name it, you're actually processing it from a different part of the brain. There's there's what I call the mindfulness module in the brain. There's a part of the brain that is able to have that spacious awareness. It's actually wired into us. You know, it's funny because I remember my uh, when I was in the monastery, I had the wonderful monk Uthilananda from Burma, who once mm-hmm. said to me, he said, mindfulness is free. We are born with it. And mm. and I think about how beautiful that is, is that we have it. We just need to activate the part of our brain that can bring us into that place. And it does take mm-hmm. some practice, but even a few minutes a day. And that's what I loved about even just listening to your program can help somebody start to change their wiring of the brain and change how they start to pay attention which will change right. how they think and act in the future so it's right. it's, it's it just, wonderfully empowering to think that just by observing our thoughts we are rewiring our brains mm-hmm. and finding the inner strength to mm-hmm. redirect the thought that i think that we're sitting inside of ourselves with a great deal of energy it's a story of a past a present and the future it's all sitting mm-hmm. there and when I'm inner, internally still, where I'm not consciously trying to get something in advance or being affected by what someone did or didn't do, but I'm just sitting internally still, what I feel that does for many of us is that it emerges a truth that is very obvious in our beings. And then mm. we can make the conscientious choice as to where 
do I direct this for me at this time? Because anger is not healthy, but it does signal to me that there's some pain. Fear is not healthy, but it does trigger that there's something owed. And so I think that when we find that inner strength and courage, it might help us to really move on more and guide our lives more so that we can stop hearing these horrible stories or live through a lot of our loved ones just going through very horrible experiences, you know? Yeah. I was just thinking, like, if you were to actually have one word for reducing clutter, what would that be? Oh, I think it would be the word breathe. (laughs) Breathe mm. slowly and deeply. And mm. to br- when you take that nice long breath, I like to ask people the rhetorical question, is what you're experiencing, is this yesterday? Is, is this tomorrow? It's very much brings us into the body and into this present moment. It's regulating us. It's lowering our blood pressure, pulse rate, respiration. It's boosting our immune system. And here it is, just taking this breath. It also, research has shown it can actually reduce negative thinking. How about that? It can mm-hmm, reduce mm-hmm. mind wandering. So the mind goes off and wanders off about 50% of the time, but it brings us back to the present, all from taking this one breath. And so I like to think that, you know, you take about eighteen to 20,000 breaths in the course of a day, and No two are alike. Isn't that beautiful? They're like snowflakes. And how could you start to notice how this breath is so unique, a little different from the last one you took? And be aware of just a handful of breaths. I think that if you could do that just throughout the day, just being aware of a handful of them, that could significantly change your life. Mm-hmm. And give you a pause. Mm-hmm. Give you a pause from all the all the the daily, the pace, the all mm-hmm. the things that are speeding through our lives, and just say, just take a pause, one breath here and there. Yeah, all the stuff. <laughs> yeah, and actually, you could think of it as uh, one of the other ideas I have in the book is this idea of fidelity to the moment or faithfulness to this moment. And so you could be faithful mm-hmm. to this breath. Devoting yourself 100% to that experience of taking this breath or faithfulness to sitting, right? Just being present as right now if you're sitting down, just faithfully noticing where your body makes contact with the chair, how your feet are resting on the floor. Notice your posture. Have an erect, calm, but, but dignified, relaxed posture. And you could... Just be faithful to all the little things. Faithful for, to uh, cleaning the dishes, for example. What would that be like? <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Or faithful to yeah. really having, a, when we're having a conversation, being faithful to just being with that person, putting away the phone, the distractions, and allowing yourself to unitask. Not to do all that multitasking, right. but to unitask and to really be present and engaged and focused with that one who is right before you. Letting them be the most important person in your life right now. Mm -hmm, I get that. I get that very much. Donald, thank you so much for the suggestions, thoughts, and the guidance. I find them to be very, very helpful. Before I let you go, so why don't you leave us with like a website where our listeners can get a hold of the book? Yeah, and you can go to, I invite you to go to my website, which is mindfulpractices.com. M-I-N-D-F-U-L practices.com. And I have a Mindful Living newsletter that you can sign up for that has new information on my upcoming events. And this newsletter also includes new mindfulness tips and reflections that you can use on a daily basis. So uh, you can also find out more about my speaking and uh, training and things like that, and also more about the Clearing Emotional Clutter book. Mm-hmm. Beautiful, beautiful. Donald, thank you so very much, and hopefully we'll get you back on the air to help us to keep moving forward because it's a huge issue. It's a huge issue, and it's yeah. a much-needed conversation. Well, so thank yeah. you. Oh, thank you, Sister Jenna, and for the work you're doing. Bless you and bless your audience. Same to you. All the very best. So is it as simple as just breathing to actually clear the clutter, to just Settle. Just settle. As Donald was saying, almost 75,000 thoughts a day swimming in and out of our awareness. Do we really need all of them? Are they really fulfilling our purpose? Is that the reason why we're so frustrated with our own lives? 
I don't know. I do know that I believe that your every moment is priceless. And it's important that you live it with the attitude of benevolence and love and appreciation and good wishes and pure feelings. I know that's my cure. And I'm hoping that that'll be yours as well. Thank you for joining us on America Meditating. Your presence is always important and always needed. I hope you're taking very good care of your inner being, your inner Facebook, as Donald Altman shared with us, and listening, listening to what you need, listening to those that you trust, and amplifying your God-given talent to be virtuous beyond means and joyful beyond means. Remember, no one can take away your happiness unless you give them permission, and we are here to love each other the same. So let's do that. And uh, we're going to end today's show with Keep the Faith. Take good care. Thank you.